Okay, so we're going to talk about linear functions and slope today. So a lot of this may be review um, from a previous class, but it's really important info. And since we've been talking about functions the past three class, a linear function is one of the most simple kind of functions. So this is where we're going to start studying um, particular kinds of functions instead of functions as an overall um, topic. So we're going to start narrowing in on different types of functions. And the first type is linear. So first thing you have to know about a linear function is that it has a constant slope. Okay? And slope is just the way we measure the steepness of a line. It compares the vertical change, which sometimes we call the rise, to the horizontal change, which sometimes we call the run, <coughs> between two points on the same line. So the slope of a line through an x1, y1, and an x2, y2 is just change in y over change in x, sometimes called rise over run, which is just the difference in the y-coordinates divided by the difference in the x-coordinates. Assuming x2 and x1 aren't the same because you don't want to have a zero in a denominator. All right, so quick example, let's find the sl slope of the line passing through each of these points. So sometimes it helps to plot them. So if I plot negative 3, 4, and negative 4, negative 2, that should be a comma, not a point. Sorry about that. And if I were to connect those two points, I could create a little triangle, and I could use it to measure the rise and the run between those two points. So to get from, say, this point to this point, what is my run equal to? 1. Yep, because I go right 1. And what is my rise equal to? Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so then my slope is rise over run, 6 over 1, or just 6. <clears throat> so one way to calculate slope is to draw a picture and actually make a little triangle and see rise and run and take a ratio. Another way would be to just use the formula. Okay, so here's my other set of two points, 4, negative 2, and negative 1, 5. So we could call this one x1, y1, and this one x2, y2, and then use the formula y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So y2, that's a 5. y1 is negative 2, so I have 5 minus negative 2. Over x2 minus x1, that would be negative 1 minus 4. So I get 7 over negative 5 or negative 7 fifths. Because when you have a negative and a fraction, you can put it in the top or the bottom or out front, whatever you want to, wherever you want to put it. <clears throat> so is this familiar? We've seen this at least once somewhere along the way. Okay, good. All right. So according to this example, what can you say about a line that has a positive slope, like the example on the left? Yeah, the y value is increasing from left to right, which means that that graph is increasing. Okay, and maybe I should plot these two to see what happens. 4, negative 2, and negative 1, 5. That line from left to right is decreasing. So positive slope, increasing line. like this. Negative slope, decreasing line from left to right, like this. Okay. What would you say if a positive slope is increasing and a negative slope is decreasing, what's a zero slope? Constant, horizontal line. What's the slope of a vertical line, then? Undefined. 
You guys are all very familiar with this. Okay. Because if I draw a vertical line and I pick any two points on it, they will be some x value. Let's just pick, say, 5. This could be 5, comma, 2, and this could be 5, comma, negative 3. Because to get to any point on that line, you go over 5, then up or down some amount. So when I do change in y over change in x, change in y could be anything, but change in x will always be 5 minus 5, which is 0. And so we say that slope is undefined because we can't put 0 in the denominator. <coughs> All right, so this is just a little summary. Positive slope, negative slope, 0 slope, undefined slope. Sometimes people say no slope, but that can be a, a confusing term because which one do I mean, zero slope or undefined slope, right? So we try to stay away from using the term no slope. <coughs> which of these four graphs is not a function? The vertical line, because if I do the vertical line test, bam, now all of a sudden I'm touching an infinite number of points in one vertical line. So this is not a function. All right, so if I want to come up with an equation of a line, remember that a line always has the same slope. No matter which two points on the line I choose, I calculate the slope, it will always come out the same. So I'm going to choose my two points really special. One is going to be x1, y1, and that's going to be fixed. It does not move. And I'm going to let the other point, x, y, just kind of move along the line. It can be any point and it moves however it wants. Any other arbitrary point on the line, I'll still get the same slope. So if I do y minus y1 over x minus x1, change in y over change in x, I get the slope, which we'll call m. And if I multiply both sides of this equation by the denominator, x minus x1, I get y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Okay, when you multiply the left side of the equation by x minus x1, they cancel. And then on the right, you have m times x minus x1. This is called the point-slope form of the equation of a line because it has the slope in it, m, and a point, x1, y1. Not a very creative name point slope. Okay, so remember x1, y1 represents a specific point. It has numbers for x1, y1. And m represents a constant slope, but x, y represents a variable point. It does not have numbers. You just leave it as x, y. <coughs> so let's do a quick example where we use point slope form. I want to write an equation in point-slope form of a line that has slope 6 and passes through the point 2, negative 5. So I'm going to write down point-slope form. And I'm going to plug in the stuff they told me. Put in a 6 for m, because it's the slope. And put in 2 for x1 and 5 for y, negative 5 for y1. So this is going to be x minus 2 over here. And on the left, I have y minus negative 5, which becomes y plus 5. And that's it. Equation of a line that goes through 2, negative 5, and has slope 6. All right, in B, they didn't give me the slope, so what do I have to do? Just calculate it. M is change in Y over change in X. So I'm going to do negative 6 minus negative 1 over negative 1 minus negative 2. So negative 6 plus 1 is negative 5. Negative 1 plus 2 is 1. So my slope's negative 5. <coughs> so I'm going to write down my point slope form. Y minus Y1 equals M times x minus x1, and put in my slope 5. <coughs> All 
All right, now I, ha I need a point x1, y1. Which should I use as my point? Negative 2, negative 1, or negative 1, negative 6. You can use either one. Any point on the line will work. So let's see, if I use negative 2, negative 1, I would have y minus negative 1, which ends up being plus 1, and then x minus negative 2. So I end up with plus 2. All right, so this is point slope form. It may not be the form that you first learned or that you use a lot. You may be more familiar with slope intercept form, commonly, um, sort of the most commonly used one, particularly the most, com most commonly taught one, even though this one is really easy, right? Very little calculation in point slope. But in slope intercept, start with point slope and this time, instead of any random point, I'm going to use the point 0, comma b as my x1, y1. So I have y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And my slope will be m, so I'll just leave that. And my y-intercept is 0, comma b, so this is going to be x minus 0 and y minus b. And then when I simplify this, I end up with adding b to both sides, and I get y equals mx plus b. So that's just an, uh, another form for the equation of a line. And in this one, m is your slope, b is your y-intercept. <coughs> so if I wanted to graph a function, Given in any form, I could always make a little xy chart, get some points. How many points do I need to graph a line? Just two. Plug in any two x values I want. Let's say I plug in zero for x, what do I get for y? One, because I already know the one is the y-intercept, because I can just look at this and know three-fifths is my slope and one's my y-intercept. So I've got zero, one. And then if I want another point, I can use my slope. 3 and 5 being rise and run. So I can go up 3, right 5, and get another point on the graph. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that makes it look like 5, 4 is on the graph. Let's just verify that. If I put a 5 into this equation, 3 fifths times 5 is 3, plus 1 is 4. All right, this is a piecewise function that we looked at, um, not yesterday, but Friday. And <coughs> if I want to write its equation, remember, we use f of x equals big curly braces. How many different formulas am I going to have for this piecewise function? Three. I have three distinct pieces. So I'm going to have one, two, three formulas, and then I have to have an if for each one for different x values. So this first line, before we find its equation, what uh, x values do I use that equation for? 0 to 20. Okay, So I put x sandwiched between 0 and 20. Should I include either endpoint? Why not? OK, you're thinking about increasing and decreasing. Yeah, when I'm writing a formula and I'm saying this is the line I'm going to use from 0 to 20, and I have a filled in dot here, so that means that I would include, use that formula also for a 0. And I have a filled in dot at 20, so I'll include that one too. And then this next piece, that's for x's between 20 and 30. Should I add or equal twos to either of those?
Yes, why? Yeah, I already have 20 being calculated using this formula, so I don't need to do it doing this formula. They'll give me the same value, right? So I could put the or equal to sign here or here, but I shouldn't put it in both places. Not that it would be really wrong, it's just bad form, like bad grammar. I'll know what you're talking about. Anyone would know what you were talking about, but it's like, like saying ain't or something. People know what you're talking about. You just shouldn't say it. <laughs> okay, and then this last line is used for x's between 30 and 50. And I'm not going to include the 30 because I already did, and I'm going to include the 50. Now I want to figure out their formulas. All right, so this first piece, what is its slope, rise over run? Ten is its run. No, sorry. What's the run? Twenty. And then what's the change in y value? Six. So my slope of that line is 6 over 20, which would reduce to 0.3, 3 over 10, or 0 0.3. <coughs> yep, it is. So this point, this point right here is 0, 2, and this point is 20, 8. So y2 minus y1 would be 8 minus 2 is 6, and 20 minus 0 is 20. So I have 0.3 for my slope of that line. And what's the y-intercept of that line? 2. Without having to do any work, I can just look and see where it crosses the y-axis. So this equation is going to be 0.3x plus And then, let's look at this one. What's the slope of that line? Um, not the middle one, the one on the right. Let's see, drawing a little triangle. Yeah, so my, my rise is 8. My run is 20, so my slope is 8 over 20, or 0.4. Um, but that line is decreasing, which means that my slope should be what? Negative. Yep. So to get from 30 to 8, I go down 8 and right 20, so that's why it ends up being negative. Down is like negative. All right, so then to find the rest of that equation, I could use any point. Maybe I'll use 50 comma 0. And I'm going to use point slope. Plug in my m of negative 0.4. Plug in my x1 of 50 and my y1 of 0. And I get y equals negative 0.4x plus, distributing the negative sign, see, 0.4 of 50, 0.1 of 50 would be 5, and multiply that by 4, and I get 20. Negative 0.4x plus 20. So that's my equation that goes here. And then the middle piece of my piecewise function, horizontal line, how do I express the equation for that. X equals 8. Um, close. <coughs> nope. Y equals 8. Yeah, Y equals 8. The slope of that line is 0, right? So it's going to have equation Y equals 0X plus B. B is its y-intercept, so if you were to continue to draw this line, it would cross at 8. 
So we end up with y equals 8. So last class, I just gave you those equations. Now you could figure them out for yourself. OK, so that leads us into equations for horizontal and vertical lines. So we just saw a horizontal line, and its equation looked like y equals something. So what would the equation of this one be? y equals 3. <coughs> A good way to remember this is that to get to any point on this line, oops, any point on this line is going to have a y coordinate of 3. Pick any point you want. Negative 5, comma 3, right? Negative 2, comma 3. 4, comma 3. Every point on that line has a y coordinate of 3, so that's how we give it an equation. y equals 3. The y coordinate is always 3. And every point on this line negative 3, comma something. Negative 3, 4, negative 3, 1, negative 3, negative 3. Any point I try to plot on there is going to be negative 3, comma something. X coordinate is always negative 3, so your equation is x equals negative 3. That's the only kind of line you can't write in y equals mx plus b form. <coughs> because its slope is undefined. All right, so a little summary, horizontal lines y equals a number, right? Vertical lines, x equals some number. And there is a third form for the equation of a line, other than point slope and slope intercept. Seriously, another one. Yeah, there's three. It's called the general form, ax plus by plus c equals 0. Luckily, this form is equivalent to the other two. If you solve it for y, you've got slope-intercept form. So if I start with ax plus by plus c equals 0, just get the y by itself, and you put it in slope-intercept form, and we know how to work with that one. So there's, no, there's nothing special you have to know about this one. If you see it, just change it to something you know how to work with. Right? So I would subtract c from both sides. I would subtract ax from both sides. Divide both sides by b, so I get y equals negative a over b x minus c over b. Slope, the coefficient on x, and y-intercept is the concept, constant. <coughs> but you don't have to remember that. Just do it each time you see one put it in slope-intercept form. For example, here's an equation 3x plus 6y minus 12 equals 0. I want to graph it. And I'm going to graph it first by changing it into slope-intercept. Made a typo there. It's supposed to be slope-intercept. So that means just solve for y. So I'm going to move everything to one side except the 6y. So I have negative 3x plus 12 on the right. Then divide both sides by 6. And I get y equals negative 1 half x plus 2. You can divide the 6 into both terms. And then I can graph it because it's in slope-intercept form. And I know that 2 is the y-intercept. And my slope is down 1, right 2 for negative a half. Down 1, right 2 gets me another point. Down 1, right 2 gets me another point. And there's my terrible looking line. So you can always just change it to slope intercept, or you could find the x intercept and the y intercept. 
right? To find an x-intercept in general, what do we do? Remember from several classes back. Plug in 0 for what? Y, good. Plug in 0 for Y. So I'm going to have 3x plus 6 times 0 minus 12 equals 0, and I'm going to solve for <coughs> x. So this says 3x equals 12, so x equals 4. There's my x-intercept. And then my y-intercept, if for x-intercept you make y 0, then for x-intercept you should make x 0. So I'm going to have 3 times 0 plus 6y minus 12 equals 0, and I get y equals 2. So I plot the x-intercept and the y-intercept and connect them. Get the same line as you do by changing it to slope-intercept form. So it's just a nice little summary of the different kinds of lines we looked at today. Different equations, point slope, slope intercept, horizontal line, vertical line, and the general form. <clears throat> Why don't we take, um, if I took 15 minutes, yeah, let's take 15 minutes and just do um, part one of this exercise in your groups. And then after that, we will do the quiz.